<laughs> what is up down and sideways you lovely individuals we have returned to league unlock eric and mark here with you for some global power rankings action 20 to 11 or 20 to 1 excuse me lots lots of shifting rejigging with the middle of the lpl squads this readjusting for t1 now as we judge this interlude where there's no faker on the squad so there's a whole lot of movement across all the boards today it's the regular movement and jumping and kind of changing of places that we are seeing as you move through especially in the summer split looking you know with that eye kind of looking ahead towards a world championship international event starts to make it where you're seeing these type of movements happen and you add in what's going on with t1 and that is a big mover and shaker in that top side of our power rankings let's dive into the number 20 spot First spot is a squad coming in, and Heretics were there last week. We're given some respect. Again, the theme on this list is regional difference. When you're talking LCK and LPL, the Kwangdong Freaks, maybe a couple games below 500, but they have shown up in some of these series past, especially that Hanwha one. Hanwha's a team that's looking a lot better, as obviously you can see on the board, and Kwangdong absolutely looking like a playoff caliber team in Korea. Yes, and this is a good sign for the LCK. This is a good sign for the Bulldog believers that have been watching this Guangdong Freaks team, seeing some signs of that next level, that level of progression where you can be and how you can challenge other teams in the LCK. And the Guangdong Freaks continue to rise up, continue to build themselves up at a steady pace where we are considering them at this tier now. And ahead of them is where the real shakeups kind of happen because again we're readjusting a squad like eg going down four spots and Fnatic, who didn't even play going down four spots seems a little bit harsh but again rejigging kind of it feels like over the last even going two three weeks squads like edg and rng throw in hanwa as well have been looking much better and so things getting readjusted eg going down four spots seems harsh we still feel pretty good about them but Third seed from the LCS, you know, it's it's tough sled. Yeah, it's a tough situation where, again, you continue to see the performance levels in that LCS and you still feel good about evil geniuses within that pocket and you start to extend it out a little bit, you have to change it. And we see that type of readjustment where we have some of these other LPL teams that are still maybe not at that ultra prime, you know, ultra prime, excuse me, that's the team. That's not a, that ultra high level of gameplay. You don't want that ultra Shout prime. Shout out to ultra gameplay. prime, though. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but you need that level of gameplay, and we have seen that from squads like RNG, EDG, Hanwha Life, even ahead in this situation that have shown just enough and have been in those leagues, right? The LCK, LPL, where you are having that type of challenge, you get that extra bump into type of list where, right, where we're at right now. The one LPL squad we're not feeling great about lately is World Elite, who again had such an incredible start to the split, but now you're talking two weeks straight where they've been losing games to bottom tier LPL teams and getting smashed by the top table of LPL squads. So not panicked or concerned. World Elite obviously already clinched the playoff spot, still going to be there, but not feeling nearly as good about this team as we did a few weeks ago. It definitely a cooling off about World Elite and what we have seen from them, what we're seeing as they've been challenged in the LPL, as you mentioned, by top level, bottom level teams in these last two weeks. And they're failing to meet that expectation, that standard that we have seen from them from that hot start of this summer split. So WE, I'm not ready to sell out yet. I'm still buying into what they've got going on. I think that there still is a chance for them to keep going, keep building up. But right now, it is very much at that middle point, at that teeter point of a seesaw where you got to decide which direction you're going. Either it's just going to flounder and, and fade out in the rest of the, of the LPL strength, or you're going to find a way to keep challenging the rest of the squads. Staying steady at that sweet 16 spot is Golden Guardians. And, you know, you combine the C9 win with the TSM loss. It's not enough to catapult them up the standings, but what it does, it kind of brings Cloud9 down a couple in closer to their level and again we talked about it when we did the lcs rankings very comparable power levels right now are the two msi reps from north america it feels like kind of you know to put a, an analogy in here if you're doing some some car racing it feels like you know you okay you've been behind the guy for so long you're just focusing on your lap time to get close enough 
Now you've got that gap close, you can race off of what your opponent is doing. And that's kind of what it feels like having this gap shrink down a little bit between Cloud9 and the Golden Guardians. Not necessarily enough where you're saying that, yes, GG number one in NA, that's how it's got to be. But we're getting close to that day. And my man, it is exciting to think about that challenge at the top of the throne. It's been a while since we've had a true contender to a squad like Cloud9. It's exciting and concerning for certain LCK squads to see Hanwha life looking better and better over the last few weeks. Yes, it was a kind of easy schedule for them this week, but 2-0, back-to-back, 4-0 overall, clean business as usual. I know the Kwangnung series was anything but clean. It was very back and forth, but Viper's looking great. And more importantly, since Grizzly has been the starter, I feel like Kingen has been looking much more like that DRX form. That is the secret sauce that we have all been waiting on, and it's been no secret for everybody that this is what has been necessary to see Hanwha life start to push into this type of territory in people's minds, into tier lists of this nature, where you can talk about this team and the players like Kingen, like Zeka in that mid lane to, to top lane, are people that we have asked multiple times to see that level of play increase, to be more like the times where you were dominating on that international stage, I don't want to get too crazy, but I think that the change to Grizzly, of course, is necessary for a multitude of reasons, as we've talked about before, but it has really paid off for these members. Not necessarily that, oh my God, he is finally unlocking them type of thing, but it is certainly at an avenue, at a position where they are better able to perform, better able to interact in the game than they ever were when Clid was operating in that jungle position. And again, that is what makes the LCK get a little more scary when even Hanwha Life, I'm not saying they've reached the potential that they had with the star-studded roster. No way, sir, shape, or anything about that. But progressing forwards, looking better and better each week. Same can be said for the old guard in the LPL when you're talking both RNG and EDG with some big climbs. And again, this, is, this feels like a multi-week progression that we've been seeing these two squads improve ever since they faced off. I think it was three weeks ago now at this point, but... RNG, they've had a tough loss to some lower tier LPL teams, but then they show up in a big way in a marquee matchup against BLG. Oh my goodness, talk about if they ever show up against BLG, putting a nice little scare into the BLG crew. Didn't get the win, but competitive against BLG is a win for Didn't most teams. Didn't get the win, but putting the scare into BLG for the first time in a couple of weeks, I think, is the way to look at it. The way that they performed, the way that they played. Hey, shout out to LP down in the bottom lane. Man was doing everything he could on that Aphelios to try and get it through, but can't get it done. Looking at this, these teams, these LPL old guard coming in in this type of spot, again, it is that buildup of, you know, one, one and a half, two weeks type of thing of looking at these games, looking at the opponent, looking at the LPL, and that is where this readjustment comes in, where you have these guys swoop into this type of position and you have them kind of knock down the LCS, LEC squads a, a little bit. And uh, again, quickly, EDG, because Uzi's been, I think the biggest thing for him, at least me watching his games, is just getting that confidence back uh, after getting more and more stage time under his belt. Ale had a fantastic week and so did Fofo. You're, you're again seeing the wheels start churning forward for this EDG squad alongside RNG that they could really make some noise in playoffs. Finally get a week of a bit of consistency out of Weibo Gaming to top off this list as they jump up a couple of spots. Again, no marquee matchups, but almost more impressively, Weibo taking care of business against lower tier LPL teams. Nothing to see here clean, done and dusted. Oh my goodness, not even needing any giga shy moments to come through. And he was not in it. So, whoa. Yeah. That was crazy. That was seemingly, you know, you. I'm telling you, if you're finding the top, uh, this the car for Weibo Gaming, you're gonna see some massive tire screeching marks right behind it because they were slamming those brakes just to be safe. We're under control now, back in the race as Weibo Gaming, holding steady in this spot of the power ranking. I think Weibo goes up the side of the wall, flies in the air, and you're like, oh no, this is a disaster. And then they land. They land fine and keep driving. You're like, okay, yeah. Never doubted them. <laughs> just just like a cat, always landing on their feet. Weibo Gaming controlling the destiny right now and staying in that good middle tier type of thing for the LPL where they look like, you know what? Get on, can get on that hot run and do damage in the playoffs. Someone who is not on a hot run, and this is another readjustment changing because now for T1, I think we got to start looking and judging this team based on 
what we're getting on the rift and judging them based on Faker not being there and not saying, yeah, but when Faker comes back, they'll be like this. Nope, we got to judge these five guys on the rift. They were completely gapped by Gen G, which again, you know, a lot of teams are getting that happening to them, to the LCK. But I feel like we had a heavier stake on this DRX match as well. And if T1 loses to Nongshim in their next matchup, well, then we got real issues. Bro, we're sounding the red alarms at that point. Get those Nangshim uh, Soup Bowl alarms getting ready for this one. If that is the way that it plays out, uh, bring on the trucks. <laughs> no, don't please, please. Never don't bring the trucks, the trucks back. Now. <laughs> the trucks in this situation. This is the Poby era of T1 that we have to be looking at and the judging this team. And I think a large part of where we're gonna find them. You know, continuing to fall down seems to be the expectation and the path that a lot of people are looking at in this immediate term is going to be looking at the four other members, the four starting members that remain here. And I think that it's fair to judge and criticize to see them not perform at the level that we can expect that they should be able to deliver at on an individual basis and be even as a team without Faker in that mid lane. And as much as we know that Again, that evaluation of just how important, how vital Faker is to the success of the organization, the team, the players, all these things is being understood to a different degree. But right now with T1, as you mentioned, this is different. This is not, oh, we're waiting for T1. We're waiting for Faker to come back. So we're holding them in this spot. There ain't no placeholders in this world power ranking. You got to be doing your business. Right now, T1 ain't cutting it. And you, I hope that now that they've had almost a full half week since you know heading into this next week with the volatility of Bangi leaving Faker stepping down I hope there was some team meeting everyone talking about what steps to take forward and how things are going to change without Faker in the lineup I hope we get a much more in sync looking T1 uh, heading into this week because it shouldn't be this big a drop off with losing one player even if it is someone to the caliber of Faker. G2, obviously LEC didn't play, so they're still sitting pretty as that number one Western team. OMG gets knocked down a peg. It's We were ready to go sky high with the hype for them, but then it's kind of back-to-back -back series that they end up losing. Obviously, still feeling fine about them, but when you got other LPL squads looking good, you get knocked down one spot. It's one of those tough situations where OMG find themselves trying to make that ultimate climb and realizing, oh yeah, the stairs into that elite territory of the LPL, man, those are mighty steep to get up to that type of level. And any little slip up, you find yourself moving down a little bit. And that is exactly what happens with the OMG crew. But again, like a lot of these teams that we talk about in this kind of this fluctuation, I'm not ready to sell out here on OMG. I think that they have not quite hit that full max potential yet. And there is an avenue for them to get there in the remaining time left in this LPL split. We got the highest ranking and it's time for Ascension to come over for D plus Kia. They move up a few spots at seven and four now and you're getting some absolutely vintage Kaisa performances out of Deft. It's the league as a whole is a lot more exciting when D-plus is playing at this level. Oh boy, is it ever when D-plus is able to contribute like this and show us the potential that we have all bought into the hype and want to see from this squad. Yes, Def on that Kai'Sa. Uh, 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 what did you not like in that game one that you saw it in the game two and you saw what he was able to do there again? Not a good move letting that one through the draft. And then even on that top side, Kana putting in some mega work out there on that rumble. You love to see it. And that's that's back to back weeks. I think we've been highlighting Kana's performance specifically. And it's been multiple players across the board talking about D plus Bible got the start this week and actually looked pretty good. I, I feel like he could and should maybe be starting going forward. I think that it is a fantastic angle and wrinkle to have for this D plus Kia team to show this Bible and get some, you know, stage practice and experience with it. That is a good move because when you look at what Bible is known for, what he's been able to do in, you know, Challenger and LCK is to be an engager, to be the one that is making these plays, to be aggressive and all in on these type of things. And you know what? That kind of is the style of D+. They kind of go all in and all for it at all the times. You got Showmaker, Canyon, Kana, all trying to make those plays. And Deft, he ain't too far behind. So having Bible make these engages was a big part of it. I think you're losing out in that 2v2 in lane as far as what Kellen could provide. And I'm not ready to sell, sell out on him either. Holding strong. But right now, 
Bible, adding in that wrinkle for this D-plus Kia team, that can take them to the next tier. Yeah, and in terms of comms, you still feel like D-plus are trying to fill the void that was left by Barrel years ago. Not saying Bible can fill it, but maybe he provides something different in terms of shot calling and communication than what you're getting out of Kellen. Last squad on this uh, board Climbing up again, uh, Top Esports, they bounced back. They didn't completely tilt the season away after the loss from JDG. Jackie Love is looking like a top two, top three AD carry in the LPL. Uh, Tian is having better performances, and Rookie's another guy we're talking about. Things looking good tentatively for now for TES as they knock on that top five. It's insane that we can say, you know, top at, you know, ADCs in the LPL. And it's like, well, well might, have, might as well just remove that LPL label and say top ADCs in the world, because that is the category and tier that we are talking about with Jackie Love, with Ruler, Elk, the rest of the very best in the LPL. But it is top esports time to shine and talk about them at this point. And you cannot be talking about top esports without talking about Jackie Love and the ripping and roaring and tearing he's doing down in that bottom lane right now it doesn't matter what the champion is he is popping off this meta is fantastic for jackie love the way that he is playing and this meta is fantastic for most lpl 80 carries it feels like everyone is just ascending to a new level as soon as it's kaisa zaya kaisa zaya as we've moved obviously a fellow aphelios is still there but now as we transition away from jig zeri these other backline assassin 80 carries that's mainly kaisa feels like the lpl is truly at their peak yeah, and with Jackie Love playing like that, even even looking around uh, on this top esports lineup, looking at someone like Tian, I think has had some very strong weeks for this team. You have to be looking at those performances. You have to be talking about what they've got going on and feeling like this is a tidal wave, that they are going to be crashing in to those top-level teams in the LPL. Can't wait to see that clash. Can't wait to see changes in the top five. Yes, because T1... They were in the VIP lounge and someone did a double take and they said, what is what is this team doing here? LNG kicks down the door. Tarzan says, I remember what you guys did to me in the LCK. Toss them out of here because LNG have been fantastic over the last really three weeks and well deserving of that top five spot. Gala looks comfortable on the squad now and now he's comfortable in the VIP lounge. Oh, baby. Yeah, they, they get to the T, uh, T1's rolling through. Poby's got Faker's ID card. They show it. Wait. Oh, this. What? I know this guy. You can't fool me with this one. Get out of here. <laughs> LNG. In you go. Yes, sir. Into this top five, into our elite bouncer room. And, uh, man, deserve it. Type of treatment, type of luxury, finally for LNG to arrive at this position. This is one of the squads that, you know, you, you hoped and felt and saw that this was one of the levels that you could get to, but we saw, you know, kind of some struggles, some middling, some knocking down from some of the top level teams in the LPL for this LNG squad throughout the middle of summer. Now we're rounding into the time where they built up performance after performance, result after result, where they've climbed into this territory and you can start feeling about it. You can start thinking about it. I don't care if EDG is going to sue my man Scout. He's putting in the results out there on the rip. Just focus on the gameplay and not on the legal things. That's what you pay the lawyers for, right, Scout? Because right now, you know, he's probably feeling pretty good about his decision, even if he's getting sued by EDG. But if, if Scout and Tarzan are at the level that they are, we're at spring, and then you throw in this new added wrinkle of Gala playing at a high level, then absolutely I expect this LNG version to do more damage in playoffs than we got in the spring split. Then we got the pair of LCK squads still sitting pretty uh, with Genji, perfect 11 and 0, business as usual, another 2 0, and it doesn't even feel like they're trying anymore. Uh, they almost don't even have to right now. The way that things look for Genji, how dominant they can play. I mean, we've been all swept up in so much that's happened this year for Genji, whether you're, you know, a uh, giga chat and you're an adore and enjoyer in the top side and seeing him develop and continue to play and change that you know narrative around him is a good story or if you're someone in the bottom lane who's like man ruler left on blah 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 in comes pays this mega rookie and the way he's been able to deliver and the flashy performances it's all fantastic but me we were talking about this before the show it's the continued excellence of chovy in the mid lane and it has never been more important and apparent 
with the way the absence of Faker is there for T1 and how that has affected it, you look at the record, the things that have happened for Gen G, the performance of Trovi since he arrived at this organization. This is one of the biggest slam dunks in esports history without question, the way that he has delivered for the Gen G faithful. And it really feels like this here, you know, he's transitioned from that lame kingdom dominant Chovy, but you'd maybe see him not have a huge impact on games and be kind of invisible despite CS leads. This year, he's been a team first and foremost guy, and he's still an incredible laner, but he's been helping out the team more and just lifted the power level of Gen G to another level. And because they've been so good, we're forgetting about how damn good KT has looked, and the only series they've lost is to Gen G. That is the craziest thing about a squad like KT that you can feel as good and hyped about them as you talk about it, but then they kind of get forgotten in that because of just the power that Gen G has shown us, the you know impressive flash that comes through from these top tier LPL teams. You cannot forget about that consistent, good, strong performance that has been built up by this KT Rolster squad, which again, crazy to say that with KT Rolster, but they have absolutely beaten those expectations and done so in a fantastic fashion. You look at this roster, the X factors, the difference makers, we're looking up. Of course, Akeem in the top side is always going to be a factor. If Aiming and Lahens are popping off and feeling good, that bottom lane can be that difference maker. And then you've got a very steady mid laner and someone like BDD. And if you're sleeping on him, he sure can make that punishment too. But of course, it is looking at your boy, your man, cuz in the jungle, cuz Lightyear making the big difference moves for KT Rolster. Then we get to the tier of their own, the two LPL squads, but we do have movement. JDG, huge upset loss to IG, a kind of sloppy 2-0 against World Elite. BLG tested by RNG, but they get the win to move to 14-1, and which means they take that top spot over from JDG. And let's also remind you again, that's a 14 and one while playing on a schedule that has teams playing, you know, three matches a day, seven game days a week type of slam jamma whamma in the LPL. And man, BLG and JDG have managed to stay strong throughout all that one. But yes, it is time to make that change at the very tippity top and have BLG have an old gigabin sit on the throne with the rest of his crew and look down at the rest of the world rank. It feels like if it's a Dragon Ball Z episode, JDG and BLG are flying in the air in their own bubble, just fighting back and forth, laying punches while everyone else is just kind of looking up at them fighting. And now it's BLG who landed the last hit now to take first again. BLG Broly coming in with the big haymaker to take the top spot. Yes, but this is one of those ones where again, you talk about JDG, I mentioned the schedule, that's where I really think this plays in to have kind of this little dip from JDG, a little bit of a struggle, a little slip here or there, where again, you still feel overwhelmingly confident about the talent, about the power level of this team. But to be fair to someone like BLG, who does pick up the results and does keep putting it down, you got to make this shift in the power rankings, BLG moving up to number one. And the reality is outside of top two, even if they lose multiple series in a row. No one's taken them. You know, Gen G, even in a perfect record, is not usurping either of these squads. They can only take each other down. And when playoffs roll around, good chance JDG takes that top spot back. But for now, Ben and the boys sitting pretty in the number one spot. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you for watching. And we will catch you on that flippity flip.